In this video, I'm going to talk about using the solver program on Excel. So we're going to use it to, for as this example to maximize the function 5x plus 2y subject to these constraints. So we're so we're, this is the function we're trying to maximize, and then we have these four constraints here. So I'm going to switch the Excel screen and just show how I would put those in. So I have the constraints already typed over here in the green section. Um, so the, in this section, this is not telling Excel to do anything. This is more just for our reference. So just to have them lined up here in front of us. Um, and then I'm telling, um, again, just having the facts in front of us that we want to maximize this function 5x plus 2y. So it's in the blue boxes that I'm going to type formulas to, um, to tell Excel what to do now. So, so these are just my variable spaces. Um, and the, so that's where we're going to see the solution to our equation. The ones that are there now are just left over from other work, so you can ignore those. Um, so this first blue box that has the negative 75 in it, I need to type a formula that matches up to what I want it to do here. So I want it to calculate 2 times x, which is this variable in D6, um, minus 3 times y. So I'm going to, if you, you know, focus up here at the formula bar, I'm going to be, whoops, be typing in there. Um, let's see those. All right, so over here, so looking up at the formula bar, I'm going to change this to so definitely keep that equal sign in front. And I want it to do 2 times x, which is my D6 cell. Um, and make sure you remember to put the time sign. Sometimes in Excel, and you know, like if you're, I'm used to writing things out by hand where you don't normally write that times in algebra, but in Excel, we need to have that there. And we want to do 2x minus 3y. So this looks good. Then I'm going down to my next box. So the formula that I want here is I want it to be equal to, so I've got that equal sign, 4 times x plus 4 times y. So that's the formula that we want here. Um, I'm hitting enter. And then this formula, I just want it to be, um, I want whatever that is in the x space, so the x variable to be greater than or equal to 0. So d6 is my x, so that's good. Um, F6 is my Y, and this is the cell where I want Y to be um, greater than or equal to zero. So now this middle section is, again, just for our information. So I'm just going to check that I have these typed correctly just to help me out when I'm doing the solving and to, and to you know, check over my work. So I have a less than or equal. This one I want to make a less than or equal. This one is already greater than this or equal. This one is already greater than or equal. Um, so now I'm going to go ahead and... Um, and I have the values in here that I want. So now I'm going to go ahead and use the solver. So I find if I click in this cell, like right where I want the max, oh, I, I have to type the maximize function too. So I want the maximize function to be equals five times X, which is D6 plus two times Y. All right, so I have the maximize function. So I have, so where I had to type was each of my constraints had to get an equation typed in here oops, equation, and then the same in the maximize function. So those are all equations that I've typed. So now if I click in here and go to the solver program, um, I find that that's just easy, like then it, it makes it easier to set if I'm clicked in the maximize box already. So um, if I go up here to data, and then all the way to the right here is where I have solver. If you don't have it, you can install that. But if you already have it in there, you're just going to click on solver. Um, so the function to maximize is in F14. So that's where we were clicked already. And I want to maximize it. So if you go to the second row, it's, uh, you can make sure maximize is checked. And I'm going to change the variable cells. So that's my D6 where I have the X variable. So I can just click on there and then hit control and click on the other. And it automatically puts both of those in. So that way I don't have to type those letters. Um, now I'm going to go down to where I have my constraints. So I'm going to add these four constraints that I have, and I'm just going to move my box over so I can see things more easily. So I'm going to add the constraint that whatever is in this cell, so that formula there, has to be less than or equal to six. Or I'm sorry, not six to um, to this to the cell again. So I want it less than or equal to H8. Um, so then, I'm, so that's good, but I'm going to add another one. So I'm just going to hit add, and I want to set up this constraint that F10 is less than or equal to H10. So that one's good, and I want to add another one. Um, so here I'm just putting in the X and Y are greater than zero, which 
we can actually cover that with um, a, a, an option we'll have to check later, but just to show the process here, um, I'm just filling those in also. So that one's good, and I want to add one more, is that this cell is going to be greater than or equal to this cell. So those are all my constraints, and then we can just double check that we have everything. So we wanted the F10 less than H10, F11 greater than H11, F12 greater than H12, and F9 less than or equal to H9. So all of these look good. Um, then I'm, here's where I check to make unconstrained variables non-negative. Um, so that should give us just the, the positive solutions also. And we want to do this with simplex LP is the option we want here. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit solve. And I'm going to just, it says keep solver solution. So you can see over here, it now has filled in. The X became 4.2, the Y became 4.8. Um, and it tells us the maximum value we're going to get here is 26. So that is the solution to this set of constraints and the max and maximizing the equation that we had set up. Um, I wanted to just show you one other thing to kind of, you know, give you evidence that this is true. So if we go to something like Desmos and we type these in and just kind of the more traditional, like doing this sort of by hand way. So if I type in my same constraints that I want 2x minus 3y to be less than or equal to 6, so that's what that graph is going to look like. And then I can put in the 4x plus 4y is less than or equal to 20. So that gives us that one. And you can see the overlap in this, you know, oops, in this darker region here um, is that region of overlap. If we want to put in the x and y, we can do that too. So that x has to be uh, greater than or equal to 0. And y has to be greater than or equal to zero. Um, so now we can see that it's the, kind of this um, this quadrilateral over here, um, and we can even see where our points are. So we can see that there is a corner point at zero comma five, four point two comma point eight, which is the one that Excel found as the maximizing location. We've got another here at three comma zero, and then of course zero zero. So those are our um, oops, our four corner points that we would have to test if we were doing this by hand. And sure enough, if we if we test these in our maximizing function, we'll find the 0, 0 is going to equal 0. When we plug in a 0 for x and a 5 for y, we wind up getting 10. 3 for x and 0 for y is 15. And then when we plug in the 4.2 and the 0.8, sure enough, we get 22.6, um, just as Excel told us. So I will just go back to that Excel page for to finish it off so you can see. Um, you know, again, just to see that confirmation that they, they found these two solutions of 4.2 for x, 0.8 for y is the maximizing point, and then 22.6 is the maximum. So that is, gives you at least a quick little sample of how to do this. So the biggest thing is it's really putting in these equations and these, um, the, you know, these four boxes here, and then making sure you set the constraints to reflect what you're doing. And typing in these green boxes, I think, is just a nice way to keep things organized to let you see what you got. Um, and one more thing, you can check over here that what it's showing you in the blue box, like once it's all solved, should be true. 6 is less than or equal to 6. 20 is less than or equal to 20. 4.2 is greater than or equal to 0. And 0.8 is greater than or equal to 0. So you can just, that's just a confirmation that you probably type things incorrectly. So hopefully that helps. Thanks.